Hello, and welcome back to the Demystifying Medicine channel. Today, we will talk about prostate cancer. The content covered in this video is not intended to substitute for professional medical advice, diagnoses, or treatment. The medical condition may vary for each individual, therefore it's advisable to consult a doctor or qualified health professional for advice regarding the disease. Hello there, what brings you in today? Well, doctor, I came to learn about prostate cancer from the best source of medical information, a medical doctor. This condition runs in my family, but I know nothing about it. All right, you came to the right place. To get us started, let's dive into the male anatomy, including and surrounding the prostate. The prostate is an organ of the male reproductive system and has the important role of making and adding fluid as well as nutrients to semen. The prostate is located just under the bladder, the organ which stores urine, and is in front of the rectum, which is essentially the last couple of inches of the large intestine. The size of the prostate can vary based on age. For example, young men typically have prostates the size of walnuts, but as they age, the size grows much larger. There is a hormone called testosterone in our bodies that's made and secreted by the testicles and responsible for the growth of normal and cancerous prostate cells. About 1 in 9 men will go on to develop prostate cancer in their life and the risk group for this type of cancer is in older African American men ages 65 years and older. Prostate cancer occurs when the growth of prostate cells surpasses the normal control and division. Some factors contribute to the development of prostate cancer which include gene mutations that can either be inherited from parents or acquired through an individual's lifetime. Genes are defined as a functional unit of heredity that is passed down from parents to offspring, helping to define the offspring's characteristics. Mutations are alterations in genes that can give rise to diseases such as cancer. Two types of mutations in particular can result in prostate cancer and this includes mutations in tumor suppressor genes, leading to lack of tumor suppressing activity, or oncogenes, genes that regulate cellular growth and cell cycles. Cancerous prostate cells are characterized by uncontrolled growth, abnormal physical structure, and have the potential to migrate to other body parts. Keep in mind, however, that not all growing clusters of prostate cells or those with abnormal shapes are cancerous, and the best thing to do is to ask a medical professional for their advice and diagnosis. The first diagnostic test used to look for prostate cancer is something called the PSA test, standing for Prostate Specific Antigen Test. This is a protein found in the blood at small concentrations of about 5 to 7 nanogram per milliliter and made by prostate cells. However, when concentrations exceed this range, such as more than 10 ng per ml, which can occur with aging, that's when we start to worry if there's a problem with the prostate. If someone's PSA levels are abnormally high, the doctor will look into the age of the patient, overall prostate health, family-related risk factors, previous PSA tests, and the results of another diagnostic test called the digital rectal exam. A digital rectal exam is a bit more invasive than the PSA blood test, but together these tests provide the doctor with the information needed to make very accurate diagnoses. The DRE is done to feel the size and shape of the prostate where the doctor physically inserts their finger up the rectum using lubrication and gloves. A healthy prostate is soft, rubbery, and even whereas abnormalities such as lumps or hard areas can possibly indicate the presence of cancer and will require further testing. Further testing includes a biopsy or the use of imaging technology. A prostate biopsy is also called a transrectal ultrasound and is a procedure done under general anesthesia where a biopsy needle and ultrasound probe is inserted into the rectum to help visualize and direct the needle around the rectum. The needle takes 8 to 12 tissue samples from the prostate by penetrating the rectum wall. If the doctor feels there is more testing needed to be done in order to reach a diagnosis and conclusion, they can send the patient in for imaging such as CT scans, bone scans, and magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. Prostate cancer may not show any signs or symptoms in its early stages. The only way to determine if you have prostate cancer in early stages is by testing. But once the cancer is advanced, symptoms such as difficulty urinating, for example, a weak or slow urinary stream, blood in the urine, erectile dysfunction, and pain in the pelvis, spine, and ribs if the cancer is spread to the bones. 
However, there are some preventative measures you can take to reduce your risk of developing prostate cancer. This includes eating a healthy diet low in fat and high in fruits and vegetables, and reducing dairy intake, maintaining a healthy weight with a BMI lower than 30, adding physical activity daily, and if you have an increased risk for prostate cancer, you should talk to your doctor about medications such as 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, which control the enlargement of the prostate. Radiation therapy is one type of treatment, but there are also many different types depending on what stage of cancer you are in. Stage 1 prostate cancer has not spread outside of the prostate and has PSA levels less than 10 ng per ml. In this stage, active surveillance and carefully watching to see if the cancer is progressing by getting tested every 3-6 to six months is done. Radiation therapy or surgery may also be suggested at this time if you are elderly or have other serious health concerns. Stage 2 prostate cancer has not spread outside the prostate but is larger and has higher PSA levels. External beam radiation therapy can be used which is a beam of x-rays that target the prostate and destroy cancer cells. There is also a brachytherapy which places a higher dose of radioactive material inside your body at the prostate. This method has less side effects and a shorter treatment time than external beam radiation therapy. Additional treatments for stage 2 include hormone therapy or androgen suppression therapy, which reduces the levels of the hormone androgens and stops them from fueling the growth of prostate cancer cells. This allows the cancer to shrink or grow at a slower pace, but does not cure prostate cancer. In addition, a radical prostatectomy can be done to remove the prostate and tissues surrounding it, such as the seminal vesicles. Stage 3 prostate cancer has spread outside of the prostate to the bladder or rectum. Treatments in this stage include external beam radiation with or without hormone therapy or radical prostatectomy followed with radiation therapy and hormone therapy. Stage 4 prostate cancer has metastasized and spread to lymph nodes or distant organs such as bones. At this stage, it is difficult to cure the cancer but treatments can manage the growth and prolong one's life as much as possible. A procedure called transurethral resection of the prostate can help relieve urinary problems such as bleeding and urinary obstruction. In addition, drugs that strengthen bones and relieve pain can be used. If this doesn't work, palliative radiation therapy targeting specific areas of the bone can be used. Also, taking part in clinical trials of newer treatments is an option. About 80-85% to of all prostate cancers are detected in the local and regional stages, which represent stages 1, 2, and 3. Patients diagnosed and treated at these stages will be disease-free after 5 years. Stage 4 prostate cancers that have metastasized to other body parts have an average 5-year survival rate of 28%. It is extremely important to detect prostate cancer at an early stage, and I hope that others do the same. If you have any other questions, you can visit the Canadian Cancer Society website for more information, and please feel free to check out the additional links provided in the description. Thanks for tuning in everyone, I hope this video taught you something useful about prostate cancer, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!